Hello, everybody. I still see uh, many people joining still, so let's wait for a couple more moments and then we are going to start. Thank you. All right, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I see a lot of people joined today and uh, welcome to the part seven. Uh, this will be uh, the webinar that just uh, came after the SP5 release. And uh, the main topics today will be, um, you know, some of the things, new things, small things, you know, in the SP5, we don't have too many changes in the post processors. And uh, the second part of the webinar, I think the, the main subject is actually how to support Angular holders in Milturn and Swiss type machines. I've seen this uh, on the forum as the one of the most frequent questions coming, you know, to us. So I decided, you know, that this will be, you know, webinar dedicated to this subject. And with that being said, let's get started. So first, on the beginning, few things, you know, um, uh, in SP5 release uh, that uh, is connected to a sub tool and probably if uh, there are somebody in the audience that um, uh, missed the previous part, uh, uh, part six, there is a lot of subject in um, and a lot of details explain, you know, what the sub tool is. So I'm recommending you, you know, to watch that webinar as well. And today I just want to uh, mention, you know, and in previous webinar, yes, I mentioned that uh, the, the sub tool will be available only uh, in the in the beta options. So we wanted uh, to uh, to make sure to test everything, you know, that everything works fine, you know, and to get a feedback from you this before we found that everything is working pretty well. And in SP5, it is completely removed from the beta options. And uh, one interesting thing uh, uh, happened in the support case that I want to share with you is uh, the, the how the sub tool feature actually helped there uh, and the part was basically created in 2020. So let me just go to that um, uh, project here. So I have here one part completely that was done in the 2020 version and uh, I will just open it in 2020 so you actually see you know the what I want to show you here. <clears throat> I'll just do it, you know, and open it in uh, uh, and uh, sample integration. I just uh, open this combined and here it is. All right, so inside the tool table, uh, what will be interesting to uh, to see is this last two tools, okay? what Why they are so interesting? They are interesting because the tool number here is number 13 and 24 and both of them are connected to same station, okay? And because they are in the same station, you know, uh, the, the, the tool numbers can be different, okay? And, and customer wanted, you know, to have a flexibility to use the, the tool number instead, okay? Okay, so now, now let me just try to convert this, pro, this project in 2021, okay? So I don't want to, I want to leave, I'll just leave it over here close the project and this time I will just, you know, open the Silicon 2021 SP5, also in the sample integration. And I will also open this, the same project, okay, it will be converted. <coughs> I'll make a backup. Right, of course, besides that, these two jobs, and uh, let me just go to Chemtree view and I want to show a tool number here. You will note that these two jobs now use the 13 tool. And if I go to a toolkit, you'll note now that, that these two tools have the same tool number, which was automatically, you know, um, assigned it. And as you can see, they're under the same tool item and the sub tool is created, but that tool number is now 13. 
which resulted, you know, like in um, wrong G code output. Now, with the sub tools, this will be solved, and I will just leave leave this here. I will, you know, close without a save. So here you have a very nice option: close without save. That will be that's done. And what I'm going to do, I will jump into VMID. And I'll go to my particular turret. And here I have the movie cutter tool item. And I'll just set this to yes. You want to, you know, if you save it, it, it will not be possible to load it in the lower uh, versions. You can click, freely click on yes. And you can note that the backup will be also created. So you can actually, you can rename this file go to the previous and still continue using this VMID in 2020 version. Okay, so no worries about that. Uh, back to the, the project, I'll just reopen this part. <clears throat> but this time, uh, it's interesting that the toolkit will work actually differently. It will automatically convert into a one a tool item but now with a big difference, the tool number remained there and it resulted in the correct G code. So my point in showing you this is that uh, this sub tool, it's not only good, you know, for the new, you know, new post and in 2021 supporting advanced uh, uh, machines, you know, with these capabilities, but it's also pretty good and handy in some uh, uh, project cases, converting it from the previous uh, 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 versions and releases. All right, let's jump into a next slide that I have prepared here. The next slide, it's about the new variable that we have added into a, a machine, uh, into a setup uh, procedure. Uh, everybody who plays with the Milturn and Swiss time machines, they, you are familiar with the setup. And what is quite handy now that uh, we added this uh, feature that you see in the, in the machine setup stock in, and the new variable will be there. This, you know, it, the, this thing we should wish, you know, uh, is it true or false if it is connected to this particular submachine? Now, this is very handy because you can get this information where your target, where, where your where your start to machine, you know, the part. Is it starting from the main spindle or starting from the sub spindle? For many machines, maybe doesn't this this variable it's not so important, but on some it can be very big, very much be. And of course, in that cases, you know, you don't need to run the very first job or you go maybe you get this information just by going into mco for the part transfer no this time you have everything on the very beginning and you can do it with this information anything you, the machine uh, requires and that's pretty much new in sp5 for the post okay let's jump to a big one the main subject for today is the, the complete guideline you know for the how to implement the angular holders inside the post processes, okay? I will go through all the details, you know, that you need to know what is necessary to run angular holders in Silicon 2021. <clears throat> Theoretically, many cases of the angular holders was supported also in previous versions, okay? But today with the toolkit, you have so much more power and flexibility, and there are many things implemented automatically some of them are not automatically and by the end of this presentation i'm going to open the real project and i'm going to play with a post just you to see and feel you know the things that i'm doing inside the post now of course every post you know has its own uh, uh stuff and problems but i guarantee you the steps that i take it in this particular project you can take the same steps you know into any project doesn't matter is even if it's a milling or mill turn or Swiss time machines you know the same steps you know you need to perform there as well so what is the first thing that you need to know about when you want to have the angular holder okay attached to your turret or spindle or you know um, first question is does the machine controller have a tilting cycle okay so this is extremely important uh, and in today's webinar, I will use, you know, the, the, the twin revolver Milter machine. You will see it also later. I think this is like a very, uh, you know, um, 
often case where there is a revolver and the customer wants to do a couple of uh, build uh, angles, maybe some uh, drilling cycles, you know, and uh, to, to how we can do it, okay? And the very important question in that, that case is, is, is there any tilting cycle available on the machine? So this is the first thing what you need to ask. And if there is, okay, like I hear just put some, you know, things related to a particular controllers, like for the Phonic Simmons and Akuma, they have uh, their, you know, uh, cycles like G68.1, which I'm going to use in, in today's example. But there's also on the Siemens, you can use it with trans uh, and plus so with the rotation uh, rot uh, functions there. And also Akuma has the G127. And uh, if you want to support these, you know, by default, of course, it, it's, they are not implemented in standard, uh, uh, rev, you know, twin revolver post. I really doubt that uh, any post it's uh, implemented with these cycles as default. Okay, so that's why we are showing you this. But um, you know, even if controller is capable to support the tilting cycle, this doesn't mean the customer really have it. You know, because in most of the cases, this comes as an option. Uh, we found out that uh, many times this is actually quite great for a customer, even if your co controller is capable to do it, you know, but you have to pay extra to get this bonus, it's great, you know. But the reality is actually other. That, uh, many revol revolver uh, machines, especially uh, the single channel one, they are coming with the low budget controllers, which often doesn't, they don't have the tilting cycle. And today I will also cover uh, that at most, uh, at let's say at first, because it is the most common. And in both cases, as you've seen, you know, uh, it requires some changes. Now, it is a big difference between, you know, when you have the cycle and when you don't have the cycle um, in the following, okay? <clears throat> so I will start with, you know, supporting angular holders on the machines that without the tilting cycle. I think this is the, the majority. And but first, let's understand, you know, what uh, what uh, is, you know, when machining is possible on the main planes. This is always possible, okay. And when uh, doing so, you can output arcs in these planes, okay. You can output compensation. You can output the drilling cycle. Many of you are familiar. Just drove it over here, you know, these planes, you know, one from the radial one from the face and you can basically have a tool with a holder here from the radial and you can also have it from the from the face on both of these you can use you know the you can use the arc you can use you know the plane you can use the you know compensation uh, the same it's pretty much available on the radial with, with the exception that this will be the g19 plane and so on and so on okay there are some rules okay so all the arcs is possible, also drilling cycle, I didn't mention here yet, the drilling, drilling cycles as well as are possible. But <clears throat> what is when you have non-parallel plane machining? Uh, when you have this kind of angular holders, and this example over here shows one inclined you know, surface here, 45 degrees that you want to uh, be machined on the machine that doesn't have these cycles. So first, all the arcs that you want to perform on that you know on that plane must be interpolated okay basically with g1s there is you cannot have the arcs also you cannot use the compensation machine cannot handle compensation in in those planes okay and of course the drilling cycles are also not possible any uh, gat uh, cycle machine cannot handle it because the drilling cycles can do it only in the main plane okay so now, when once you understand the problematic, I will maybe move to you know uh, what are the things that so can do automatically and what they are not, and what we actually need to implement inside the post, you know, for these particular cases. So first, what is extremely good, you know, the arcs are interpolated automatically by Solicam. So Solicam will detect if this particular tool is inclined, and you have. Uh, inclined surface they are not parallel okay we are going to detect it and the arcs will be automatically interpolated i'll show you an example 
we are going to output you know the 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 compensation with an error inside the trace okay we are going to generate the machine plane with uh, the results of no plane inside the trace and of course if you want to use the drilling cycle inside the job you must you know uncheck uh, um, the use cycle uh, uh, checkbox and you need to here I say it's, it's no cycle, but actually use cycle must be unchecked. Okay, you are pretty much familiar what I'm talking about. Now, what you need to understand, you know, that these three things, the last that I mentioned, you need to implement, you know, kind of limits inside the GPP so the user is informed, you know, that what he's trying to do uh, is in, it's not capable to do it in this matter. Okay, so you need to put these things in. Uh, now the question is coming like why the solar cam cannot do this automatically, you know, and this, the answer is simple, okay, so this is the very first release where we are actually officially uh, supporting the Angular holders on high level, you know, so in the upcoming versions we are going to improve these things, you know, to be automatically. For now, I'm teaching you, and this is one of the reasons why we have the webinar, how to do these things, you know, correctly inside the post. <clears throat> Now, how, what do we need to change? So the, the changes are in GPP, I said that earlier. And uh, first we need to take care about the O machine plane. Now for all of you that are not familiar with maybe our you know, previous uh, webinars, we have the variables like O machine plane and side O, you know, so everything with the O, uh, this is like connected to the OPO set and also this uh, is an out output relative to the submachine coordinate system. And these are pretty much three things that we need to implement, okay? I just make it very simple, okay, guys? I know that all these examples that I'm going to show you today, that I will try to make it as basic as, as possible. Every line that I write it here, it can be done, you know, on much detailed level, of course. But uh, the idea is to give you just a rough opinion, you know, what are the things that has to be done. So the first thing is machine plan. If it's equal no plan, please print an error to a user and abort the G code. Of course, here you can mention, you know, the things like on which job it is, what is the reason behind it, uh, maybe not to abort it, maybe to uh, uh, print it only once, not many times, and so on. And then we have the site O. The site O is the variable related to, to a compensation. What is the site uh, in the uh, where it produced? It is really connected to an old machine plane. And uh, in the trace, you will see this value as error, okay, which uh, doesn't show shows you anything, you know, but you need to write it like shown. If site O is equal minus nine nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, please print you know some error message. You know, you can also abort it and so. And for the drilling, you know, you can easily, you know, put inside the drill procedures, you know, if the O machine planes are not equal X, Y, or Y, Z, please, you know, uh, um, these drilling jobs can be only executed without a cycle. Right, and uh, one small detail while we're talking about drill cycle, uh, if you have a machine without a tilting cycle, it is completely impossible to do a tapping uh, cycle, you know, in inclined plane. Okay, so this is a small detail that you should know as well. And uh, the last thing before we jump into a post is the um, very interesting detail about the drilling, uh, drilling on um, the machines without the tilting cycle. Uh, uh, but I'm talking now a little bit uh, uh, older machines. Okay, older machines have uh, very maybe some of you already. I heard about it, there are two um, uh, kind of, uh, uh, there, there are basically two uh, ways of how the rapids are interpolated, okay? There are some machines that interpolated like a, a regular cutting uh, feed interpolation, you know, they're going from one point over here to another point, you know, like it is G1 with the maximum uh, feed rate, you know? But there are, you know, older controllers that don't handle this, you know. They, the, uh, the 
the axis of the X, for example, here, it's much slower than the Z, and that's extremely um, uh, dangerous, especially if you are inside a hole and you are going to retract with a rapid, this is not going to be handled well by the machine, and it will create a kind of um, dog leg uh, effect, you know, and you might broke the tool for sure. Now, uh, in the even in the newer generation of the machine, I found out many that this is a simple settings that the the customer itself can choose between these two modes. Okay, I I believe there is no like default for each machine brand. It's a different default. Okay, but I I would say that this is guys a standard. If your machine can. Uh, can do this, just please prefer this interpolated move. It's much better than the dog lad, especially in this kind of situation. If you don't handle that uh, inside uh, your machine, then you will have to handle it inside the GPP. Uh, inside the GPP, it will be pretty much, let's say, simple. You will need to go to uh, rapid move and everything that is inside the drilling with no use cycle and stuff. Please, you know, uh, use the G1 instead of G0, okay? So it will not be so bad, okay? In some circumstances where you have older machine, you need to do it in this way, okay? Right, so let's now go into a project. So I have prepared a simple part over here that has this inclined uh, surface also. Drill, a lot of holes, a lot of uh, geometers here, pretty simple, okay? Let me just go inside my setup. Setup, it's pretty simple as well. I just want to show you a machine. We have the twin turret over here, main and sub spindle. Joes are here. This is the setup. This is the, the part itself. The Mac, it, they are you know, already created. So we are just going to start defining some jobs that we are going to use for our debugging while we are implementing some code. Right, so the first thing is the toolkit. Inside the toolkit, I have not done anything. So it's completely empty machine. Let's define some angular holders, okay? So first thing is to add it. I already prepared this inside my database. We have the angular holders. And here you can know that I create kind of two folders. I will go in these details also later. For now, I will just use this around Y. And what I will simply do, I'll just take the, you know, there's a main body here. And then we have the angular body. What is the difference there? Uh, just small detail. The, the main body has a join that is a rotary one, and there is an axis data about it. There's an angle of the name, there is the axis vector, it's around Y, and the current position. Okay, so I'm going to take the main body, just place it there, drag and drop, create it something like this, and just simply drag the end mill here. Let me see what we have here. Pretty nice, I like it. Let's go to the machine preview. It looks good, it looks good. So I want to set up you know, the tool so it works under 45 degrees. And uh, there are basically two ways how you can do it. It is really not necessary that you have a joint that is a rotary. Um, you can freely go to your angular body as, as shown over here and just rotation around our why you know will provide this so you can also use it in this way uh, but uh, what is uh, by my opinion better in you know doing it from the uh, quick axis through these component axis is that you can really see this over here it's quite kind of nice uh, if it's around y you can take your right hand uh, around the y-axis and positive will show you know rotation right so in this example, I will go with a negative 45, as you can see it here. So I'll just create one minus 45 ready tool for this job. Perfect. I'll just save and exit. Enough for now. And let me just quickly define some profile job very quickly. I don't have even the, the position, so let me just add it. Uh, I will place it in the same corner system spot over here. So I'll just Pick the, uh, pick the surface. And what I like it to do, guys, is just to make these values as round as possible, okay? So you get the very nice numbers in your G-code. This is something that operators like it a lot. So I'll just put here 12, 20, maybe go also this to 20. I'll just accept it. 
right so i'll just create a new i'll just uh i don't like this actually i will just use a simple line i don't need to go over there this is completely okay uh, select the tool perfect my levels it's fine technology for the technology i'll just don't change too much things but you know what i like to mention here that we are going to use the compensation okay and um for the arcs i'll just use you know same as the leading in the distance starting from the center and i'll just seven conflict <clears throat> as you can see the toolpad is generated already i can go to the machine preview i can see the tool it is there in the starting of the arc so he will approach with an arc uh, but uh, as i mentioned earlier before i jump into this project so we are defining now the, the situation when the machine doesn't have a tilting cycle and when it doesn't have it you can see here the two quarter system this is like a mac orientation and here you have a position so i'll uncheck this and i'll check this one as you can see they are both equal what this means this means that solicam wasn't able to rotate the plane you know because this machine doesn't have a cycle and therefore all the g-code will be related and uh uh, with orientation to this coordinate system here. So it is clear that arcs has to, has to be gone. We cannot generate them, the compensation, we need to care about that. And also the machine plane, we need to care about that as well. Right, so let's see what we have now in G-code. I will go with a trace, uh, trace zero, and then I'll go with trace five, why not? <clears throat> Uh, let me close those that I played before. And here it is, here is the G code. I like it. And what you can see, there's no G, G2, G3. These are the arcs that go inside and outside. And as you can see, they are all interpolated, okay? So this is great. But what you can see guys, that something here is crazy <laughs> and something here is crazy, something that is not so, uh, good at all so let's let's take a take a look what we need to do so i will leave this job and i will open the post <clears throat> here it is so on the left side i have post on the right side i have the post okay i'm using the visual studio code uh, i'm re recommending you guys you know that you use this uh, uh also um and the first thing that i am going to do I care about machine plane, okay? So I know that all of you, you don't know this post or anything, so really pay attention on the details that I'm mentioning, you know, where you need to go, you know, and what are the things that you need to care about, okay? Because similar steps, you will need to do it also in your post processors. So I have a, um, a procedure, it's called the machine plane. And this machine plane, it's starting in start of job. So every time when I have a new job, I have uh, making sure that, that I'm generating correct machine plane. If I go inside, you will see it's not very big procedure, okay? It's pretty much simple. If it's a turning, then we are always going in the plane 18. And if it's not, then if it's a, if, the job is equal drill we are going with the plane 18 and then over here we are actually handling the uh the planes so if it's xy we are going to, to 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 make it if it's not you know we are going to make it as g19 right the next thing is the compensation let's go into compensation compensation it's pretty easy here we have the g code that it's equal to g42 and sido pretty good pretty fair i like it the third thing, let's go to the drill. Let's see what we have inside of the drill. So we have a turn drill. We have a lot of things here. And uh, we are using the OPPO set, as you can see, nothing so special. And we here, I have a drilling cycle. <clears throat> inside the drilling cycle, if it's a milling, we are using the OPPO set to generate it. Pretty nice, good. And from, from here, it goes pretty much standard cycle. Not so big as you can see. Right, let's go to line for now. Inside the line, we have also, it is not so big. Mainly we are just caring, you know, 
it is the first rapid move. We are going to use this variable also later, checking if compensation is active. And this is actually the important line where everything will be printed out, okay? So this is where we care of. And the same, or let's say same, it's also in the rapid move. And then I'm just going to go, I'll just go into my arc. And inside my arc here is where everything is printed out. This is what I cared. Also here I have the OPPO set, depending on the plane and so on and so on. Okay, so what are the things that we need to care? I see, I saw mentioned here, let's go first into machine plane. So I'll go to the machine plane first. And if you want, I, I often use, you know, the search. You can also use the, you know, the, the function page here. Uh, but I like, you know, to search it quickly. And when I, once I found it, I use the control key. You know, you can use the control, holding control and clicking on the procedure. It will jump to this procedure, okay? So it depends what you prefer. Both are good. Uh, just I found it that I like when the things are bigger here, you know, so I don't want to, to waste the variable space here. Sometimes I really need a wider screen, but of course not for this webinar. Nice. So, <clears throat> so what we need to do here. So we have, if it's turning, we don't care about the turning, but if it's milling, let's care about the milling here. So what I'm going to, to do here, um, uh, it's like this. If O machine plane, uh, not equal, um x y or uh sorry if o machine plane and not equal or equal equal no plane let me just for a moment <clears throat> where to start here so if O machine plane equal no plane, and then let me go, yeah, I forgot to generate the trace guys. Uh, actually, this will be pretty, also pretty good. Let's go to the trace five. And this is my upper turret. Okay, this is two channel machine. And before I jump into this uh, plane stuff, so I want to also, you know, on the way, show you the setup that we have here, the stock in feature of uh, the variable here, okay? Let's now jump, you know, to the old machine plane. As you can see, the old machine plane is generated as no plane. All right, so let's, according to that, let's just define it. So if old machine plane equal no plane, you know, please print, you know, something. No plan possible. Okay, so you need to, you know, say this to your, um, um, to your customer that this is something that you cannot handle okay of course you can put more conditions and stuff you know i i'm as i said i'm playing with with very simple stuff here guys you know so this is uh, what you can do here also let's go to the compensation inside the compensation it is a little bit different here you cannot use the error you know uh let me go to this uh trace <clears throat> so i go to the compensation oops and inside the compensation, I get the site, and also for the site O, I get the error. Okay, but in this case, you cannot really use the error as your um, for your condition. Okay, but instead, you can just use you know if site O equal you know minus this number, then you need to print out you know like compensation is not possible in this job. Okay. And of course, to close the quote here. Okay, so this is what you can do. I'll just, you know, uh, I always do it. I just save it. Of course, this guys will work. It will generate uh, generate errors. Okay, and then also inside my drill, <clears throat> I will go to the drill here, drill point. Of course, also over here in the drill cycles, somewhere here you can generate, you know, if you know if O machine plane not equal x y or uh o machine plane not equal y z you know please do something you know you cannot you cannot use the cycle so just like error message of print uh, you know drilling cycle is not possible 
you can generate something like this, okay? So these are the elements that you need to care about when you have the, you know, the angular heads, you know, um, that is generated without the cycle, okay? And let's now jump to uh, things that uh, you need to care when your machine has a cycle, building cycle, okay? So let's jump into a presentation. And there. <clears throat> right. So I mentioned there that there are two things that we need to change. Uh, the changes are both in VMID and GPP. And what you actually need to do is to create a new submachine, okay? The new submachine that will actually control, you will define the custom plane rotation around X and Y. Okay, maybe some of you didn't know that you can, yes, do it also around the X. Uh, most of the time, the, uh, the, the, we have the cases uh, that you can do it around Y, but you can actually also do it around X. I will show you in this webinar how to do it. And, um, and inside the GPP, you know, the changes that you need to perform is to implement it in the local coordinate set sets, okay, everywhere into a line, rapid move, into arc, machine plane, compensation, drill, and drill point at least, okay. Uh, I will try just to show for some, uh, we don't really have to do in everything, you know, but I'll, you know, I'll give a try. And the last thing, of course, <clears throat> in order the local coordinates really work, you know, we need to implement also plane rotation cycle, either 68.1 or 127 or any, any other, you know, uh, that's what you actually need to output. Now, in this example, I'll use G68.1. I will show you the format and I'll show you how to do it. So let's jump into this. I don't need the uh, presentation anymore. And um, the first thing is inside the, the submachines. Okay, so I'll just jump into uh, VMID. I will go to my machine definition. And here at the bottom, we will be able to see, you know, four submachines, actually five, but, you know, just please focus on those four. And as I'm showing this example, you know, only for the main spindle, you know, um, I will show you it here. So I will just add a submachine related to the main spindle table. And I will copy the name. I will just, it will be exactly the same order and everything. But instead here, I will use G68 and just around Y, okay? <clears throat> I'll go to the controller definition. I will go to the tilted plane definition. And you can note that new um, submachine, it's, it's over here, right? I will unlock it. As you can see, you can unlock, you know, the parameters to not be a default and use the customize. And for the very first rotation axis, I will take it around Y, and the next two will be set to none. Before saving and leaving, if you have the multi-channel machine, guys, go to the machine definition, and here you have the channels. So don't forget to add this um, submachine. Otherwise, you know, you will not be able to generate any G code. So I'll just save and exit. And now the COM part will be we uh, has to be reopened in order to take the effects. <clears throat> right, now let's see, as you can see here, we can now go to our job. And what is interesting here, that now you can go to tools and inside here at the bottom now, because we are using the tool that is on upper turret, now on the main spindle, SolidCam filters for you, you know, all the submachines that are possible to be used in this situation. So in this situation, I'll just say submachine, you know, and here I have also another option here available. I'll click on it and I will not change anything here else. Okay, and I'll just hit seven calculate. I will open my machine view. Nothing has been changed, okay? So the machine preview is not different, but pay attention guys. Here we have the, you know, machine, uh, the sub-machine uh, the, the sub uh, coordinate system. But if I 
turn on the local coordinate system for the position, we can now note that this has been rotated 45 degrees and the plane is generated. Now, you can trust me that in now in the compensation, we have the side and everything will be generated as there is a plane, you know, and now there are the things that you can use, you know, to implement those things. Now, as we are using it here around the Y, I'll just save and exit. I'll go back to the um, these, I'll just copy, I'll just paste it here. And instead of Y, I'll use also around the X. I want to show you also the example around the X. Tilted plane here, uh, I will unlock this, I'll go customize. And instead of Y, I will use X none none for the third rotation and, and, and second one. Again, I will go to upper turret and add this submachine as well. But of course, it requires to reopen the project. I'll just do it that quickly. <clears throat> Let me take coffee. Coffee is extremely important. All right. Now, um, let's go to a toolkit. And let me show you a couple of more tools here. So over here, I'm using the on the station number one. Let me go to a database. Here I have plane rotation around X. Okay, so maybe for you now it makes sense why I create these two. I see a question here like whether we will get the you know the project. Yes, okay, guys. So everything what I'm showing you right now, you will get it. You know, it will be available on the site. And of course, this is recorded, so you uh, you are going uh, to get that as well on the website under the uh, latest webinar section. <clears throat> and now instead of uh, implementing those, let me just show you what we have. Let me close this one, go to, to the tool view. We have also the main body here. Okay, pretty much looks the similar, but here we have one that is only one tool available. And then we have when we have two tools that can be attached here the same, the upper one and the lower one in this example i just use these this over here so i'll just attach it to number three for instance and angular here and then i'll just repeat it on here as well uh, the tool itself i'll just copy the same tool i'm not so you know as you can see this is so super easy you know to do in solid cam now great and um, what I will do, I will take this holder here and now I will just, let me just make it smaller. <clears throat> I'll just go to and close this down, small, make it a little bit smaller. And this one, we don't need it so big. Right, I'll go to the quick axis and here, instead of now around the Y, I will rotate it around the X and I, and this one will be 45 here, minus 45. And this one will be 45. As you can see, they are different. Maybe they collide, maybe not. But just in case to not collide, you can do a right click. You can go mount to upper turret and you can mount it anywhere you want. I'll just mount it to the number eight. Perfect, far away from everything. And what I'm going to do, just copy, paste here. And edit. Uh, for this, I'm going to use X and different tool. The first tool will be the number three. I'll just save and calculate. I will go to my preview. You can see it over here. It collides a little bit here, but we don't care. It's for the you know post processor developing. And uh, I'll just copy the same job here. Just paste it. <clears throat> same submachine, okay, pay attention that this is same submachine, but the tool now will be the tool number on T8. So I'm calculate. Let me see it. Perfect. Right. We have all here. So let's jump into a GPP. I hope uh, I hope you can focus now next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, you know, I hope <laughs> uh, this will be a little bit more, you know, um, 
other to follow, but uh, I think uh, I think you will get very good, you know, opinion about what are the things that you should do inside your post. So first, what I like to do, I will go to my line procedure. <clears throat> Why I like to start from the line is it is pretty clear that I want to output uh, the uh, local coordinates, okay, every time when the plane is rotated, okay. So it is logical that here I need to create kind of variable that, that I will, you know, control whether or not the plane is really rotated or not, or let's say that if the submachine was used or not, you know, the correct one for the tilting plane. So I'll just, you know, uh, I'll say uh, plane rotated. Yes, and it will be based on the on the channel ID, channel ID. And uh, <clears throat> if this is true, please use this. Okay. Else, just don't use it, and just you know go and close the if statement. So this is basically the formula how you how to implement you know the uh, the elpo set everywhere. I'll, I can just more or less copy and put it also in rapid move <clears throat> and I'll have it over here. It's for a G code. Instead of that, I'll just put the G code to zero. And of course, I can go also to drilling. Uh, over here, I have um, the OPPO sets. I can go and also place it here. Uh, I can go with the um, G zero as it was before. And I can just del delete this one as well. I can go to the drill cycles, okay? And also the similar stuff, it can be used also over here. So if the plane is rotated, you know, give me the L coordinates, okay? If it's not, please, you know, just use this ones over here. So Z L pose, Z L pose. You know, this is kind of, you know, now, once you know what you need to do, it's kind of boring play to do, you know, it's kind of a routine, the way to do it. Also, you then go to the drill point, okay? You need to care about the drill point as well. So, ah, I, I done the drill point already. And of course, also the arc. If you go into an arc, you can also find these. I will just uh, copy it over here, copy everything. And if plane is rotated, please use the um, the elpo set uh, instead of this. I will just use the G code. I don't need to use anything else. This works great. And just to remove this. And of course, for the you know for the center stuff, you know you can also change the not that you can but you must change it okay but i'm not going to do it in this webinar that's that's not the focus on this but you get the rough point you know all the things that you need to implement but what is the crucial point the crucial point is that you need to you know care about if the plane is rotated or not okay <clears throat> so in order to use this i will you know move it up and i'll create here you know the special you know for the plane stuff plane rotation and uh, I will just create you know like global logical and it will be like this and it is always good to put some you know uh, comments on this you know that it's you know true you know when the plane is tilted or rotated it's up to you why this is good because you know whenever you go then with your mouse wheel here you don't you don't really need to go on the top to see where this variable is and what this variable do but in visual studio code you can just take your mouse over here and just move it and hover uh, you know or you know um, the variable and it will shows you the info you know and it will give you exactly the same info what you put over here i think that's that's quite nice <clears throat> right uh when the plane will be rotated let's implement these guys um i like to you know you can put it in start of job you know it depends of your 
uh, structure, you know, but this post structure start, starts everything inside the rapid move, okay? Um, so therefore, here I have kind of a first rapid move, it's true. So it's our first movement of, on the machine. And yes, you can detail it. You can approach first Z, then X, and then just output the, 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 the plane. But again, I, I'm not, it, my intention is not to go into details. So I will here, just before here, I will create a call over some new user define. We'll call it output plane, okay? And I would like to output it, okay? And over here, I will just jump to the end of job. And I would like to make an output of, of let's, let's say over here. Okay, I'll just call it and say please off. Right. Now I'll copy it. I'll put it anywhere, just you know. So we have the procedure and end P. Perfect. So the we have the argument here. So I will open the bracket and I will just type it's logical and uh because it's logical, it's Boolean and um it's it's a local, okay? So I'll just uh, use this standardization way, you, you know, to distinguish whether or not I'm going to output it or not. So if the mode, you know, equal one, or if it's true, you can do any uh, of Boolean zero or one means also true and false. Uh, I want to this to be true. Okay, and I want to output this, you know, uh, plane rotation. So the plane rotation will be G68.1, X, and the X is always, it's not shift X, Y, and Z, okay, guys, but it's a shift uh, X after the rotation. This is, this is the right variable to be used in all Milton cases. So it's shift X after rotation. Then we are going to have the same for the Y. So let me just copy, shift Y. Then we are going to have shift Z. And then we have, <clears throat> we have I, zero, J, one, and K, zero. So for now, I'm just doing it for rotation around Y. And uh, then we have R. So R is the angle that will be rotated. And the variable that uh, is used in this case is first plane angle. And I'll just uh, finish the uh, code block. So this is this is more or less the form, you know, the, the block that you should use, okay? And now the, the question is, you, you might ask, you know, why is the first plane angle? If you go over here to your VMID controller definition, tilted plane definition, you will see that it's first you know, rotation. And this one is around Y, this one is around X. So that's why the first plane angle is used there. Go back here. So if the mode equal one, please output it and the plane will be set to true. And um, else, if it's zero, please, you know, don't do all of these, but say this is false. And uh, the output will be G90. 69.1, I'll just close this and close the codes here and just do end if. Now this is like a very basic, okay? I will expand this later, but <clears throat> what are the, what we are still missing, okay? So I will output the plane in the rapid move. Yeah, that's great, but um, just, I forgot one thing. You, yes, you sometimes you can have the first rapid move also in line and uh, for these, I would say like, yeah, let me just also do it like this. If this is true, if it's the first, please make a call. And if, and I'm going to copy all of these and also place it, it over here as well. So, okay, so every time when we go inside, uh, the, the solid cam will go through this and what will happen guys, you can just guess it, but yeah, you're right. This will every time, even though that I'm 
using the correct or not correct submachine, this will always give me the G68.1. So somehow I need to distinguish if the plane is, or let's say not the plane if, if it's rotated, but if the tool is, you know, rotated, if it's rotated around, you know, the Y, or if it's rotated around the X, I need to distinguish this somehow, okay? And for this, I will use the get functions. Uh, we didn't use very practically in this webinar series, you know, the, the get functions on that matter, but this will be a, a great uh, showcase, you know, how you can, how these can be used. And in this post, uh, you probably seen this procedure. It was really small here. I call it every single time when the plane it is there, you know, to get to direction in station. And if you, if I jump here, I already built something before. I'm not using it anywhere. I always have it here, uh, uh, almost in all posts, you know. But I'm going to, uh, you know, to redefine it a little bit. Okay. Uh, so what are the things that I need first? I, I don't suggest you to use the tool direction in station because the tool direction in stations gives you an output relative, you know, to, it is relative to the station, but it's in the angle. It is not really a vector, okay? You can find more about these in the help topic. You can go to the GPP tool. You'll find here the GPP commands, get functions, and here you will see tool direction in station. So, this is the example what you can do with this. It is pretty old function, guys. So my recommendation is don't use it, you know, for Angular cases because there is a better one, okay? Another better one is the, let me just find, tool vector direction. And this one is much better. We talked about this one before in one of our previous uh, webinars. And it gives you, you know, the vector you know, in positive or negative, you know, direction relative to the station coordinate system. And that's why this one is much, much better to be used. I can rely something on it. So I will just take that. The input parameters are exactly the same as for the previous function. So converting it to a new one, it wouldn't be a problem. So I'll just take it, the results, get tool vector direction in station, put this here, you know, and it will return meet the values into these variables, okay? Now, the next thing what I will do, I will go to my, you know, plane rotation stuff, and I will define some new variables that I will use it over here. Um, <clears throat> it will be a global, also logical, and I will call this, you know, I will distinguish if, if this tool is orientated along the X, Y, or Z, okay? So tool orientation X, and I will also mention the comment here. So true when the tool is along the X axis, and I'll just multiply this. You know, for all of you, um, the way how I did it is just control D on specific line. And uh, then I yeah, just comment to change here as well. Perfect. And the next uh, set of, um, of variable that I'm going to use if the tool is rotated along X or along Y, or maybe it's not, maybe it's parallel to the machining plane. So I need to distinguish this, okay? So I will use also it will be the because it's boolean it's 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 B A because it's also an array and tool rotated around X and also you can say true when the tool is rotated around X and the same I will do you know when it's rotated around Y. Great. So I, I think I have enough you know, parameters and variables. You know, I never do the coding, you know, double, you know, even if I restart this webinar, I don't think so that I will be able to re replicate the same stuff, you know, again, uh, but let's give a try uh, this time. So what I'm going to, what, how I can use it over here, okay? So first I will take all of these variables. Uh, let me just try to align this all. I'll try to use, 
take this all variables and set it to false every single time when uh, I'm um, um, uh, when I'm having the start of a job. So I'll just copying. By the way, the how to select multiple lines, you just hold the Alt key, hold the Shift key, and you just drag it, copy it, and I will just place it here. Beautiful. Uh, I will not place it here, pardon. I will just put it before I just feed these values, you know, back again in after the uh, after the get function. And what I'm going to do, I'll just set all of these to be false, okay? Now, the way how you can also do this uh, is there's also another trick. You can also hold Alt and Shift and you can select multiple lines. And then you can just, you know, type it like this. And, uh, I think it's quite handy to do sometimes this. It saves you a tons of time. Right, so I don't need these at all. I don't need this at all. Yeah, I will, I, I will do it from more or less from the scratch some things. So I will get the information where, what is the vector orientation and I will just I just need to take the data and say and feed these values. So what I'm going to do, so I'll take this variable and I will say if absolute of this variable, you know, uh, equal one. So it means that is along the X, I will say that, yeah, this is along the X. So this will be the channel, ah, forgot this one. I almost forget it. So let me just go here, select it, channel ID. Also this one and channel ID. Perfect. Copy, paste. So this one will be now true. Perfect. And and I will just repeat, you know, for the same uh, process for uh, the Y axis. So if it's Y, then it's this is Y. And this is if it's along the Z, it is along the Z. Beautiful. Now, what what this also means to us let me now we need to based on this we can know if the tool is rotated around the x or y how we can know this well it's pretty simple so i just take it and i say if the vector x you know equals zero okay if it's equal zero and you know vector y not equal zero and you know, uh, vector z not equal not equal zero, then the this with the channel ID will be true. Okay, and more or less the same thing you can just you know apply, you know, with if not equal and if this is equal, you know, rotation around y will be set to true. Um, <clears throat> this is the key, guys. Okay, so this is how I, how you can distinguish, you know, the tool direction. Uh, you can distinguish if so only in the cases when the tool is really, you know, rotated around X or Y specifically, you can use this G68.1. Otherwise, please keep all my code working. Okay, this is what we are trying to do, and. Um, Let's go to this, um, um, what is it called? Output machine plane, yeah? Output plane. So in the output plane, we are going to, you know, may extend this one. So, so first what we are going to say, it's, you know, tool uh, orientation direction here, you know? So if this is true, or you know any of other it's true don't do anything equal true equal true or y equal true or z equal true so if any of these are parallel you know we are not going to use our plane at all okay so in such a cases, I'll just say the plane rotated, it, you know, plane rotated is just set to false, okay? But else, okay, if some of the tool orientations, you know, are false, then we are going to check, you know, if it's around X or not, 
So first, because I already defined it around Y, so I can say, you know, if this one equal true, please use this else. I can do also an else if, then else, then yeah, 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 guys, yeah, we, we can also use that as well. And just in this case, it will be, this will be zero, this one will be one. Of course, this can be done also, you know, much shorter. And in this case, this will be printed out, it's true, and, and if. I think, I think I done it. I think, I don't know. So yeah, there's another thing more. Um, we have this get to direction and we have this machine plane. So here we say machine, all machine plane. We are not looking at the all machine plane anymore. You know, we, we need to care about these a little bit better now. We need to know, um, that this will be now always G17, okay? So that means I can take this, I can say, so if this equal true, or if the tool around Y equal true, it means that my plane will be rotated. And in such a cases, I'll just make it like this. And if, and in such a cases, Please, my plane, where is the 17? Yeah, here. So in that case here, this must be a plane 17. So what guys, when the plane is rotated, G17, X, Y. And, and else here. Of course, we need to care about arc and stuff, but I get, I, I guess you get the point. So let me just think, let me just see what we have here. So I'll just uh, do an operation, G code. I will really be impressed it, it works. <laughs> usually, usually I have the problems in same station number. Okay, this is something related to a posted cell that I have from the previous version. Let me just turn this off or yeah, I'll just do something else instead. Well, number three, this will be eight. Done, okay. That's right. G code generate. There you go, guys. We have our G17 plane. Let me zoom in. We have our G68, X0, Y0, Z0 around 45 degrees. Perfect. We have our 41, we have our G2, G3, works very nice, G40. We have our G69.1. Again, we are going to use it. This time it will be around the X, 45 degrees. And next time also around X minus 45 degrees. That's basically it. Um, what to say? Um, I hope guys that you enjoyed very much to this webinar series. This is of course the, the last one, the part seven, uh, my lucky number. Uh, there will be no more um, uh, webinars uh, from up-to-date webinar series in for the Solican 2021 release. Uh, after the 2022 release, we are going to open another webinar series based on the post processor, of course. And please give us your feedback on the forum, you know, or anything that you are interesting, you know, interested to show to, to, to be to be able to do in the post processors. Please write us in that uh, section of the post processors. And we are looking at this and we are going to, con you know, to uh, uh, think about it. And maybe one of your subjects will be the next uh, subject in the webinar. Again, have a great day and uh, see you next time. Bye.